Hey Tyler, how are you? How are you doing, Anton? You okay, buddy? Good. Actually, okay, yeah, okay, I understand. I'm I'm seeing in the list of participants, Arthur. I'm, I was kind of wondering. I didn't see you. That's so. me. That's, uh, yeah, I that's you. <laughs> I, I was just busy elsewhere, and Daniel's uh, on a call with the counselor, so yeah, so he's he's also busy. So I got volunteered. Um, looks like Lucas is in another call. He's busy, so we won't be seeing him. Just give everyone a few more minutes to get here. Anton, have you tried out that um, new row yet? The Kaltura Cal system? No. Did mm. you? What, what? Yeah, yeah, I've used it. I've got it set up. It seems to work quite well for me. Interesting. Yeah, I need to try. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, do, do um, have... it's a permanent. It's a permanently set up system, so it's a case of um, people could drop in and out of it whenever they want. It's not like you have to set up a new meeting each time. Yeah. Yeah. Which I think would be much more practical for people who just want to like, oh, can we just talk something out for five minutes and just after? Yeah, of course. I mean, ideally, we would need kind of multiple meetings going on no, at the same time. There's, right? there's, um, I think there's basically six channels right now, seven channels, okay. and we can make more. And there's there's room for like fifty. <laughs> we can oh, have that's, 50 that's amazing. That's perfect. Oh. So, Tyler, do you have a time like to sync up? like an hour after this meeting oh uh, yeah i can give you i'll give you some time perfect yeah I'm, I'm, i've been trying to sync up with everything that's going on myself it's you know everything goes yeah. so fast sometimes. actually you I, know i wanted I had, to discuss a few I had things like six, with you. <laughs> i had a few hours off last night and i've had a bit of a morning doing some personal stuff and i've come back to try and pay attention to stuff and i'm just like i don't know what right. anyone's doing or what everyone's busy on and everyone's really quiet and i can't tell yeah, everyone is still waking up, I guess. Yeah, it's yeah. early for a lot of people. For a lot of people, yeah. It's way into my day, so this is like, um, this is six o'clock at night for me. <laughs> it's dinner time. Oh, it's already 6 p.m., right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty late in the day for me to be. A, it's not late in the day. I'm obviously up and about and doing, but it's always been at this time as well, so. But yeah, I spend most of my day doing something else and then I do this and then I do some other things and then I do a comms call at like half 12 at night or in the morning, whichever way you want to call it. So my time zones are all out of whack. I'm just uh, in the process of making um, Slack icons for time time zones. Mm -hmm. So everyone could just have a time zone with a Slack icon on it and that way if you hover over someone, everyone can see what time zone they're in and it's just... Yeah, it's actually... Quite a neat just idea. A little, I mean, just a little, just a, just a little, conf, just a little picture that's got a time zone in it, and everyone could have that nice. picture. And then it just makes little things like, oh, what's time zone in? All right, I'm, I'll catch them later on. Or it's just that little bit of information that hopefully will speed up the process. I'm in the process of making them this morning or today. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Anyways, I think we've got enough people in to start. We've got Dan, Christine, Maya. So I've got main team leads in. Um, Yeah, let's start with this then. Thank you everybody for coming. Hi Arthur, nice for you to pop in too. Um, I don't really have much of an agenda to start my day. Um, I don't really have anything to say. I'm still trying to catch up with what's going on. But if anybody, anybody, anybody's got any, well, they want a few minutes at the beginning before we go into team, I'm happy to give the floor. I just want to, to say that we're making some ridiculously good progress in terms of defining the actual product and the direction for us to take in the short term. Obviously, there are grand visions and amazing things that we're dreaming about. But at this point, we're literally like cranking out 
the, the use cases and basically the, the product for this literature you process. And we're working with that group of Rockefeller researchers and Dr. Tayeb to, you know, uh, to create something tangible as soon as possible. Yeah, I mean, I, I saw there was another call and that was one of my things to do today to try and watch that call through, but I ain't got around to it yet. Um, so so let's start with team progress and team updates. So we'll start with Maya from Risk Factors. Hey. Hey. Uh, hey, actually, we realized that we have a lot of good code that we have to gather together and push for another extraction. But in parallel, we started to work uh, more closely uh, with uh, Slava. And um, I hope to have a really uh, exciting call with my team uh, tomorrow, uh, slightly extending the borders of what we want to do. Because <clears throat> Uh, next submission actually really matches one of the pipelines that we can feel in a bigger vision and bigger mission. And I hope uh, we'll integrate. And um, I think that like even up to now, even though it was kind of quiet, kind of nothing happened. Today I've seen very beautiful pieces of code submitted. So it's not that really nothing happened. We've progressed a lot. And good. Everything is good. Good. And no blockers, no, no, nothing that's uh, slowing you down. It's just about coalescing what you've got so far and trying to work out how you can refine it and move forward with it, yeah? Uh, people just a little bit busy now because some uh, some countries have started, including myself, because, for example, Israel, uh, we started to work regularly. We are out of quarantine, so we, I have a lot of calls and meetings and everything. But uh, same for uh, Yasan in Greece and uh -huh. some people in our team, too. So it's, it's a little bit slower, but I think it's going to be OK. It's not about sprinting. It's a, it's a marathon. If we all just keep moving in the right direction, it doesn't matter. You know, the pacing is not... Uh, obviously, the faster we can work, the hopefully the more we can contribute to the, uh, the problem. But we're not thinking of just this problem right now, so it's not... Um, yeah, don't stress, yourself and, don't, don't, don't stress yourself and work 94 hours a day, which you can't do, but, you know, an example of just don't overdo it. Um, okay, uh, what else we got? Let's do transmission team with Christine. Hello. Hi, Christine. Uh, hi, how are you? So, yeah, we're um, continue tr to try to integrate more of our workflow with the developers infrastructure and several things going on. Um, Alex, girlfriend, and I are working on um, type here, simple characteristics extraction. We're trying different approaches. Um, and we have Nisling working on getting Twitter data uh, that has been collected since January, I believe. Um, and then we are we have Dimitro Shabakov working on um, constructing the knowledge graph uh, for our task. So yeah, it's it's still going slowly but steadily. Uh, we hoping to kind of get our infrastructure more ready. So we, uh, you know, the process in the future will be uh, more efficient, et cetera. Yeah, so that's uh, what we have. So you've got, you're pulling information from Twitter and you're, and you're trying to make the, 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 the stuff you've built so far more streamlined and more effective, especially as you know you're going to need to scale up. Yeah? Yeah, exactly. Cool. I'm just trying to make some notes as well, so. Um, uh, VT with Dan. Hey guys. How are you doing, sir? How are you doing, man? Doing well. How are you guys doing? Oh, yeah. Steady away. I'm sure I'm not as busy as you. How are you doing? 
what you, what uh, you up to? Yeah, so to report on the different teams projects. Um, so with Siddhartha's project on the immunology side, uh, we're going to be talking to an HIV virologist from the Los Alamos National Lab this week about what could be a useful deliverable with regards to the vaccines angle of the past. So, that's that's so yeah. user research on from a virologist, lack of a Exactly, word. yeah. Like best use cases, um, what the product could look like. Uh, so that's on that project. Uh, for Ali's project on Twitter uh, sentiment uh, analysis for these drug related papers, he's just having trouble. Is that similar to what Christine's doing with pulling information from Twitter, or is it? Yeah, it's similar. Same, yeah. Is it the same pipeline, different, different pull? Yeah, it's different uh, end case kind of. Ali used yeah. the same uh, data set then. The same Twitter data set. So, so Ali's been trying to get access to it, but he's having troubles with his API key. So, uh, oh, okay. oh, Ali's here on the call now. But Ali's here. Uh, shouldn't we take that data set if we already have it and just upload it to our dataverse? Yeah. Yeah, then that'll be great. Okay, cool. Uh, what what do we need to do then? Um, I'll just I'll just have Ali connect with you, Christine, then to to help out. Sure. Because I, I think Christine, we're just further Christine, along. In the and Christine, we are you uh, are you able to upload that to Dataverse, or do you need Slava's help? I think uh, once you get a data set, you can upload it to Dataverse on your end. Uh, oh, we, uh, we don't have a data set yet, or do we? Uh, Nistin is working on getting it, but I think he has problem with Hydrator or a package that's uh, recover the tweets from IDs. Mm. Okay. So, so it's a, yeah, if you I can do, talk to him about the progress, that would be great. Was I there do, someone talking? I yeah. do have the... the do have the script? I just require the yeah. I I do have the script. I just require the Twitter API access, and for that I require the developer account. Christine, sure. do you have one? Yeah, I do. Oh, uh, so that's easy that then. Be, yeah, 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 yeah. Because the script is ready. All right. Yes. So just connect after the call and let's make it happen, and then upload awesome. to Dataverse. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Sometimes that's what you would get out of just getting all together. Um, yeah. So you've got your Twitter and your vaccines research is going to be going on next, yeah. Dan. So then Malavika is working on trying to extract contradictory claims from papers. So all that we're doing right now is just comparing the titles, like based on semantic similarity and see if there's any idea of like things contradicting one another. So she's got some preliminary results on that. Um, then there's the project on adverse drug reactions. And so right now Isaac's team is looking at just co-occurrences within a sentence of an adverse drug reaction with a drug as like the first pass to try to extract those kinds of relationships. Um, then with Jeremy's project on extracting mechanism with uh, and doing causal analysis on that kind of stuff. Uh, we have Charlie Hoyt who's giving a presentation on incorporating annotations to enrich a knowledge graph that we would create um, in the Bell expression, so the biological expression language. So presentation coming up this week. Uh, we're excited for that. And then this week, I just want to start putting things on Dataverse. I've been a little behind on that, but I'll get that going this week. Okay, cool. Sounds good. I'm gonna. I'm basically gonna have to subsection your team into the different tasks that are going on because otherwise, I'm just gonna lose track of them. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of six balls that we're juggling at the same time, pretty much. Not enough. No, I'm only joking. <laughs> I am absolutely only joking. Um, have we got any, we, Slava's not here and Brandon's not here, so we're not going to do anything from data sets. Um, how's the infrastructure data DevOps stuff going? Do we know? Who's, uh, who's running the DevOps side of stuff? Is it Anton? Anton? I can't remember. Um, Lucas is on a call so he's busy so he's not going to be here uh, Geo doesn't know I've got um, Manuel or Daniel here for that and that's fine has anyone got any questions or anything that they need to feel like bring up or discuss or bring to public knowledge 
What are the main things on the agenda for the coordinators recently? Um, what we do in a moment. Um, we're trying to s sort of come up with a framework for the organization. So like what, what, how we, how we should be organized and also how people want to be organized and trying to get the sentiments between what we feel people might want and also trying to get more involvement from everyone. That's what we're trying to, we've been researching like um, how Valve organized their, um, Valve organizes their company systems. And I've been doing research on a number of tech companies to try and um, streamline like how we express our values and our understandings and our opinions and our thoughts and all this sort of very esoteric hard to sort of define stuff um so I've cluster been that. of crazy things that we're not able to communicate <laughs> yeah it's just how to define all these things that are really hard to define um art has obviously been here there and everywhere with calls and conversations and bringing other people in um calls with like trying to get the user research the user case research in the situations about you know making sure that we produce something of value and use to the people who are going to be we're aiming it at um daniel's been doing coordination stuff regarding trying to build um more connections to um like local government local, local governance and municipality stuff i'm mainly holding on by my coattails trying to hope work out what the hell everyone is doing and trying to make sure that everyone's got what they need me and uh, me and Anson are still trying to work out how to make um an onboarding system that's more effective i'm going to be trying to review our onboarding system and um have almost like a an intro manual layout of the land and what how we believe and see things and that goes back to values and judgments and opinions and thoughts and trying to make it clear when someone joins that this is kind of how we are organized or semi-organized and what what's going to be expected of them and you know obviously like treating people with respect treating people fairly and all that sort of usual stuff so it's just there's a there's a lot of like balls in the air, but they're all like smaller and much harder to divine. <laughs> Does that give you an answer there, Dan? Yeah, yeah, no, that's cool. And I like yeah. the uh, I like the new help needed automated channel. That's yeah. that's a very cool thing. Yeah, we're gonna try and improve on that, and also try and make more people aware of it, so it gets used more, so it becomes more of a a resource. And then I'm gonna try and implement that into our onboarding process, and we are still getting people joining and not doing introductions and i'm going to try and make a point of working out how to bring them in but it's a balancing act of trying to i could technically bring everybody in who's like showed interest but there's only so many things i can do and so many projects and problems i can send people at and i yeah, still probably. kind of have a, I still have like a, a little bit of anyone who turns up has to have a bit of a self-starter about them they have to be willing to go dig through what's going on, what they're interested in, and they need to kind of be able to find their own little corner. And the people who don't get along with the idea of finding something that they feel like they can be useful with, um, like no one has the time to babysit everyone else. We're all adults here. And the side effect of that is, is the, some people who are expected to turn up and go, well, here's this nice, easy nugget of a task and go do it. The board for requesting tasks is good for that. But the, there's other people who might just turn up and, and, um, and it's about kind of like gently guiding them towards here's an area with a number of problems and you might be able to contribute something into that fuzziness. I mean, you're a prime example, Dan. You've got lots of things going on and you've got people helping out in lots of different elements and all teams have got elements going on and it's about judging. Go, go talk to this person and see if you can be helpful, but I expect you to do a little bit of your own work. You know, I'm not going to hold your hand through everything. If you need anything, there's people who are willing to help you and we need to try and make it more clear who can be helpful at, like with that sort of stuff. Me being a prime example of that and Daniel's very busy, but kind of does a little bit of that too. So it's about, we're just trying to make, uh, it's about clarifying information, clear, making it more clear and useful, but it is just, it's very kind of hard to define. <laughs> for yeah, lack of a better word. <laughs> um, also congrats um, to everyone for hitting a thousand this weekend. 
Yeah, we're a thousand one thousand and three technically on members. I don't I don't know if we should congratulate ourselves with that or not. <laughs> <laughs> a fun fact, I guess. It's there, it's just a detail right Vanity now. metrics. <laughs> yeah, it is a vanity metric in its own way. Um because I have I'm seeing people who are like applying through the website and still not turning up in Slack, or if they are turning up in Slack, they're not turning up with the name a name that I can recognize because often people are like going through the website and I'm getting the update from who they are and what they're saying. And then I can't find them on Slack. And I'm like, well, I'm that's not, actually I'm not a good there. point. Like there is a major drop off from people receiving the invite to Slack via email. I'm thinking of kind of uh, having you after you submit the form, you're actually presented with a page that explains like, Hey, click here to join Slack. Like haven't used Slack. This is what Slack is. And kind of a mm -hmm. small guide. You know? Yeah, we need it. We need a little bit of tutorial stuff, and I keep him telling myself that I should do it, and I'm also keeping him telling myself that I should do 50 other things, and <laughs> I really don't know how to prioritize them. So I'm getting really bad at light work, and sometimes I'm just like, I can do a little thing that's not that important, but might be a little useful thing, and I'll feel like I can do that quicker than a really esoteric. Yeah, let's connect thing. maybe today or tomorrow on this like tutorial thing because again, it all comes with the the pass of least resistance. And yeah. we can make the 5% improvement in the onboarding that will lead to 80% improvement in the actual like uh, interactions and engagement. So. Yep. So definitely I'm on board with that. And um, we'll have a talk when you've got some time. Shout out. Um, uh, we had a, a little bit of a call, Arthur had a, a call with um, about the data owners project. And that's, that's an interesting, um, it's going to be an interesting connection to what we're doing especially about open source and open data and um i've been doing a lot of research on like the uk government's regulations and rules on how open data works and that sort of stuff can you um, give a quick summary of that call because i i actually jumped off after five minutes i had another call um i i listened to most of it and missed the end of it but um yeah it was i can't really summarize it it's it's too it's too complicated to summarize the call will be uploaded and anyone can watch it when they want but it's yeah it's about the idea of um yeah i can't really so my, my brain's been fried so i didn't yeah, take it all so the, I, all right I'll, I'll take a step so from what i understand these guys have been working for years trying to establish the infrastructure for individuals to own their own data and actually be able to share it with relevant institutions for research or other purposes um because you know even like in in US, it's very hard to, to do that, even to export your medical data, as I'm exploring that this week. Um, but uh, the whole idea is to create infrastructure to support these interactions. And unfortunately, you know, for the past couple of years, no one really cared about it enough. And now it's a good timing and great opportunity to actually help guys like, like them uh, to make things happen, which I believe we can help. And if that's it, um, yeah, that's a good summary. That's, yeah, I was probably doing my usual, probably wanted to over explain it because that's literally what I do. Um, so, yeah, because <laughs> I've got a whole icon that basically makes the joke out <laughs> of the fact that I go too long on everything. Oh, uh, man, I, I, I really I, hope I, that you were not uh, kind of like weirded oh, out I'm in not, that way. I'm not offended. It's just, a, I just, you just don't expect to see it, you know. I've been on Twitter for too, on Twitch for too long. But it's just weird to see your face as one of them. That's just odd. Anyways, um, have a good day. We'll see a day where everybody's up to. Um, if anybody needs anything, shout out. Um, use the help needed channel if you need a task filling. Um, it's pretty simple to do. Use the use the shortcut. Add it in. If you don't know how to do it, ask me or Anson. No problem. All I'll walk you through it and um, I'll speak to you guys tomorrow or before and if not, thank you very much for your time. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.